have scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. In this episode, we're tackling the most unpredictable natural occurrence on Earth, the weather. From savage storms to sweltering Saharan scorches, the weather is the one thing every life hacker needs to be guarded against. And we're here to make sure you're always prepared. It's extremely dangerous. And if you get sucked under, you're probably not coming back up again. So stay tuned for a life-saving how-to guide on mastering Mother Nature. From hanging ten in a torrent, to hands-free head protection. And a wheelie hot hack to cool you down. Then in our epic hack finale, we'll show you how to literally make your own weather. Yes, make your own weather. <laughs> That's amazing. If you have trouble hanging onto your brolly in a storm, this video is going to show you how to use your head. Combine a standard umbrella, a humble household plunger, and the modern hacker's secret weapon, gaffer tape. And in minutes, you have the ultimate in wet weather protection. This hack works because of suction power. So this person has created a small vacuum inside the plunger. You've got a lot less pressure inside the plunger than on the outside. So the pressure of the air is actually going to push in on the rubber, meaning that it's held really tightly onto the object. While it's easy to look at look at this guy and kind of go, he's an idiot, I think you've got to look at, you know, someone's resourcefulness, innovation, uh, sort of general ideas, use of equipment, and then sort of, you know, come to the conclusion that he is an idiot. I think for once I may be agreeing with George. I'm scared. We're plunging off at the deep end immediately in this episode. It didn't even stay on his head for the whole video, so I'm taking a rain check on this. A miss. If you're looking to cool down in a heat wave, this clip's for you. Not everyone has a pool to cool off in their garden, but most people have a wheelie bin, which is where this backyard legend comes in. Well, this is rubbish. For once, George is literally correct. The reason it works is because he's making his body wet. And then what happens is the water evaporates off his body. And when it evaporates, it takes a little bit of his body's heat with it. And so he gets cooler. As long as that bin was cleaned thoroughly before use, this hot weather hack is a refreshing hit. This hack shows you how to make your very own microclimate with just a fan and a duvet when the extreme heat all gets a bit too much. The human body is really good at cooling itself down and it does it through sweat. Moving air can help to cool us down even further by helping this sweat evaporate even more quickly. So if we have movement, such as the fan in here, what we're actually doing is creating movement of the air, moving the heat off us and cooling us down. This super cool video will quite literally blow your mind when the mercury starts rising. I'm a big fan of heat. Shoveling snow is annoying at the best of times, but this extreme weather clip helps eliminate its one major sticking point. This hack can be remembered in one simple mantra, wax on, snow off. The shovel is made of metal, and metal is a really con good conductor of heat. So if you're going to put more snow onto your shovel, chances are the heat is going to be conducted away and it's going to get cool, and so the snow will freeze to the shovel. What the wax does is it doesn't cool down as quickly as the metal, 
So it just means that that new snow which you're shoveling up is less likely to freeze onto your shovel. We've seen metal is a good conductor of heat, but it's also good with the cold. And that's something you'll have learned the hard way if you ever lick freezing metal for some ridiculous reason. But why do we get tongue freeze? Under the microscope, your tongue isn't just packed with water, but covered in lots of lumps and bumps that give it a really big surface area. When we put our warm and salivary tongue against a super cold object, the body can't supply enough warm blood to stop the water in your tongue from freezing, and it will bond like a glue to the object. Unless you want to look like a victim in the latest Saw movie, never try and rip your tongue away. You just need to convince someone to bring you some warm water and your tongue will be wagging again in no time. So the lesson here is, tongue stick, but wax doesn't. Remember that and this hack will serve you well. Staying out of trouble in bad weather is your primary concern. But coming up at Hack HQ, the lads will face down the eye of the storm to help make extreme weather extremely entertaining. With the help of his willing minion for the day, Stephen, Mike is going to be literally playing God as he shows you how to create your very own extreme weather system. I think he may have finally lost it. Stay tuned. So far, we've seen how to stay ridiculously dry in a storm and how to keep cool in your own bedroom-based microclimates. But don't get comfortable because the forecast for the next 20 minutes is another storm of extreme weather hacks. Batten down the hatches. Another show, another leaf blower video. This time we're using one to clear snow from your vehicle without freezing your hands off. This hack works by using a leaf blower to blast air at high speed and high pressure towards the car, which forces the snow off it. Yeah, leaf blowers, they're good. Very good for clearing teenagers' bedrooms. Pants and socks, just get those all into the corners. Doesn't seem to work that well with the snow, though, really, does it? This looks like fun, but by your third hour of snow blowing, the only thing wearing thin will be your patience. Me thinks we should leaf this one well alone. And this. If you're a fan of drills, you'll love this next extreme weather tip to keep yourself cool. A drill-powered fan, no less. There are certain parts of your body um, where you can cool down quicker if you make those cool. And it's all about where you can feel your pulse. If you can feel your pulse, that means your blood vessels are running close to the surface. And if you can cool those down, that means you can draw some of the heat out of your blood. Necessity is the mother of invention, and this guy really needed a fan. So it's a heat-reducing hack hit. We've already had a snow-clearing hack using a shovel, but if you ever find yourself in a blizzard without one, this next hack will have you rolling in delight. This is all well and good, isn't it? But, I mean, that's just how anyone makes a snowman. I mean, that's all he's doing is making a snowman in that one. When we create a snowball, what we're doing is we're putting pressure onto it, and this makes the snow melt and then freeze again into a much more solid, compact object. If we then roll that object up over more snow, we're continually doing the same process, which is adding the snow and pulling it up off the ground to make one big snowball. This snow carpet weather hack not only works, but it's fun. And judging by this guy's jump at the end, this couldn't be anything but a high-flying hit. This guy has accidentally harnessed the awesome and deadly power of one of nature's most dangerous natural occurrences, thereby shaving a few minutes off his journey. I would not recommend travelling via mudslide. It's extremely dangerous. There's currents involved, just like with any river, and if you get sucked under, you're probably not coming back up again. A large volume of water moves down a hill, uh, and it picks up the earth around it and emulsifies it into the water itself, forming mud. They can pick up cars, they can pick up houses. You do not want to be in the way of one of those things. Because there's so much force there, and because their momentum is much higher than normal water, because uh, they contain all that mud and bits of earth, Everyone hates traffic, but this muddy hack is just not worth the risk. An irrefutable, emphatic and absolute miss. Extreme weather can be so much fun when it suits you. How amazing would it be then if, say, a tech wizard and a gangly guinea pig were to come up with a way of creating the right weather at will? Over to Hack HQ. <laughs> Mike, Stephen, 
weather hack today, so I am prepared. Sun hat, sunglasses, rain clothing, throw your worst at me, I'm prepared. You're prepared for every single weather that I can throw at you? Yes. I really don't think he is. You're not going to need any of that. Right, OK. What are we doing then? Right, so today's hack is all about creating our own weather. Creating weather? Mike actually sounds like a Bond villain. Never will we have parties cancelled because of rain. And you don't have to be confined to winter to go skiing. Sounds amazing, but also completely impossible, surely. Oh, Stephen, have you seen this show before? Actually, cloud seeding is big business. You know, if you make it rain before it actually gets to you, you have clear skies for your party. That's incredible. So you could have, like, a wedding with guaranteed good weather. Amazing. Yeah, so we're going to make some clouds right here in the workshop. So how do you make clouds? So you need three things. You need warm, moist air, right. some way of cooling it down, yep. and then cloud condensation nuclei. Y cloud condensation what? Took the words right out of my mouth. Cloud condensation nuclei. So it's a dust particle or, or some sea salt or something in the air which actually causes that warm, moist air to condense on, and that produces your cloud. But in the workshop, we're going to use hairspray. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's much clearer. So I'm going to pour hot water into here. This is going to form the basis for our warm, moist air. OK. Then our cooling point, which is going to be ice on the top. OK. Um, great, but we haven't got a cloud yet. Aha. <laughs> Give it a squirt with the hairspray. Surprised he knows what hairspray looks like. That's the cloud condensation nuclei, then. Exactly right. Very exciting. Here we go. Yeah, it doesn't get much more exciting than cloud condensation nuclei. OK, put the lid back on. And is that how cloud seeding works? Exactly the same. You've got a nucleation point where all of that warm, moist air can collect on, creating a cloud. And you can actually see it. The warm air is rising up and it's swirling around in here. As soon as it touches that cold bit on the top, oh, yeah. it's forming a cloud. A little cloud in a jar. We've made a cloud, Mike, but there's two problems. It's a little bit small. It is. Second thing. It's in a jar. Yeah, but I've got a solution to that, and it's called liquid nitrogen. We're going to make liquid nitrogen clouds? We're going to make clouds with liquid nitrogen. So liquid nitrogen is already at minus 196 degrees. So you can see the cloud forming, and that's from the warm, moist air coming from my breath, condensing on the minus 196 degrees of the liquid nitrogen. Wow. I mean, it's a much more impressive cloud, but it keeps falling to the floor. It does. That's because it condenses, and it's cooler than the air around us, so it just drops straight down. So we need hot water yep. and two very fetching face masks. Ah, suddenly the hack makes sense. Here we go, danger time. Right. right, should we do this? Let's do it. Brilliant. Buckets. We need hot water in one yep. and liquid nitrogen in the other. So there's our hot water. Liquid nitrogen on the floor. Gosh. There we go. And what I've got to do, come over this way. I've got to pour the hot water into the liquid nitrogen instantly, creating our cloud. OK, Ready? go for it. Wow. <laughs> wow, look at that. OK, wow, that was impressive, Mike. But even though that looks so good, I still don't think that's enough to stop the rain coming at our barbecue. No, well, clouds aren't the only weather we can create. We can also create snow. OK. Yeah, so we can do all our winter activities any time of the year. That is impressive. Yeah? You want to see it? OK. Follow me. So far, we've shown you how to keep cool with a power tool, shovel your way out of a whiteout, and how definitely, definitely not to travel in a mudslide. But don't hang up your waterproof just yet, because coming up, we're showing you how to have fun in a flood, stay safe with slipping cars, and even how to surf a raging river. Severe flooding can dampen the spirits of even the most hardened extreme weather enthusiasts. Luckily, this guy has found a novel way to ride out that storm. Fun, no doubt, but how has this modern-day Noah turned a biblical flood into his own private boating lake? In order to float on water, you need to be pushing away or displacing an amount of water that weighs the same as your body. This is called buoyancy. The problem with trying to float on super shallow water is that you might be resting on the bottom before you've displaced enough water to keep you afloat. What you need is a bit of speed to get you back on top of things. As you're pulled forwards, your weight moves back a bit. You've changed your centre of gravity. 
and as you tilt, some water is kicked up in a characteristic spray in front of you, while the rest is forced between the dinghy and the ground. If you get a high enough speed, the right angle, and the right depth of water, the pressure underneath the board will be enough to hold you up. I've got a funny feeling this float has got more than shallow water to worry about. Ooh, it's hard being right. A very painful miss. If you love to hang 10 but live nowhere near the sea, this flooding hack will help you ride those landlocked waves. Gnarly. It's quite hard to say what's formed this wave in this clip. I suspect this is a mixing of flood water and river water that's causing this turbulent flow. And a stationary wave happens when fast flowing water meets slow moving water coming from the other direction and the fast flowing water is forced up above it in a wave shape. It looks like tea. It really looks like a river full of tea. I wouldn't fancy dunking my biscuits in that, George. There are a few different things that can cause a stationary wave, but in this instance it looks like it's an undulation in the ground underneath that fast flowing water. Because the ground underneath isn't moving, the wave doesn't move either. This sort of overflowing river is extremely dangerous. The currents are very unpredictable, so I'm really surprised that this guy managed to get out there and do this. Surfing in the sea is cool and glamorous. Surfing in a muddy river is dirty and dangerous. I'm afraid this hack is a wipeout. Now, strictly speaking, this next video isn't a hack. But after all this serious extreme weather science, we felt you deserved a little light relief. I'm here at Barry Island Beach, and there's no sign of the This ocean dweller certainly had an escape plan for when the wind picked up. Unfortunately, this weather reporter didn't get the memo. Sometimes you get waves coming from different directions further out. If they meet together, they can add and make a bigger wave. This is called constructive interference. Interference is a very mild word for what that fish did, Chris. Waves in a storm have a huge amount of energy, so they're definitely powerful enough to throw a fish. But in this case, I'm not sure that's what actually happened. I think it's definitely probably real. If you knew someone was going to throw a fish at you, you would be anticipating it, and she didn't seem to be anticipating it. I think the odds of this happening are so astronomically small, I'm amazed we got it on camera. I think it's definitely, probably fake. We don't condone violence in any form, but this, um, slipped through the net. And off the scale, hit. What's the best way to stop a car from sliding on ice in extremely slippery conditions? Watch this next hack to find out. Kind of. It's clear there's something strange going on here, because not only is the car sliding, it's moving not in the direction of its wheels. And that's because there's ice on the road. If a car is sliding fast towards you on ice, to be honest, it has a lot of momentum. You trying to stop it is probably not going to pay off. Never say never. Well, actually, maybe these guys should have. It's car curling for lazy people who don't want to get out of their vehicles. If they can make a luge an Olympic sport, they can damn well make car curling an Olympic sport. The reason the car slides in the first place is because the wheels lose traction on the ground, because there's no friction between the wheels and the ice. They have no grip on their shoes because they're also stood on ice, which means nothing's gonna happen. They'll easily be swept along by that car. You have to commend these ice warriors' bravery, but you also have to mock their stupidity. A slippery, dangerous, very near miss... miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong, and no bridge we won't cross. Mike with his trusty guinea pig Stephen will put any hack to the ultimate test. Debunk, demystify and deconstruct so that you don't have to. Earlier we showed you how to stop rain in its tracks by creating a cloud out of thin air. Now we're cranking that weather dial up a notch and making our very own blustery blizzard. So, Mike, we can make clouds, great, but we can't actually do anything with clouds, can no, we? No, which is why we've moved on from clouds and now we're on snow. We want to go skiing. But don't we have fake snow already, the stuff you, like, add water to? Exactly right, and I'm pleased you brought that up because I've got some in my pocket here. Oh, and I've got some water as well. Brilliant. So I'll pour this out on my hand. Yep. And then you add the water. Right, here we go. Yep. All right. OK, and then watch it. OK, what's happening? There we go, look, see, it's expanding. Is it really, Mike? Oh, yeah, yeah and it's that. turning into snow. So this is sodium polyacrylate. It's a super-absorbent polymer. And 
we can make snowballs and stuff out of it? Well, you can give it a go, because it's, yeah. Let's have a try. No, it's, it's a bit rubbish, really. No, it really it? is rubbish, isn't it? Good work, lads. So, how are we going to make snow that we can actually do snow stuff with? We need to use ice, which is why I've brought along my Snow Blaster 4000. Anything that ends with the number 4000 is definitely going to be a good thing, isn't it? OK, what is it? Well, essentially, it's a wood chipper. Right. Wood goes in there, motor spins around and it chucks out there. Um, We're not going to use wood. Right, so it's not a Snow Blaster 4000, then? We're going to use ice. A hundred kilos of ice. So is that going to chop up all the ice? Of course it will. If it can chop up wood, it will chop up the ice. And it does it with this 200cc petrol engine. The ice goes in the top there, it spins around with a really fast blade and shoots out snow the other side. OK, ice in, motors chops it out, snow comes out the other side, but how does it settle? I've got another thing up my sleeve, which is dry ice. Minus 78 degrees. We're going to mix that in with the ice and that's going to help it freeze down and settle. Ah, once again, dry ice saves the day. Brilliant. Let's make some snow. Let's do it. Right. Bad boy on. Right, so ice. In goes the ice. Look at that snow. And of course, the dry ice as well. We've got to chuck a load of that stuff in. Oh, look at that. It really is coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. From now on, every day can be a snow day, as long as you've got about 900 spare wood chippers and seven tonnes of ice hanging around. I think that worked really well. Do you? Each to his own, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's actually settling. We need a lot more of it, though. Probably 100 tonnes or so, yeah. The thing is, though, we can have snow all year round. Snowballing, sledging, building a snowman, perfect. Exactly. The key thing here is we can make snow whatever the weather. Yeah, it's the ideal weather hack. I'm off to make a rubbish snow angel. <laughs> Proper snowball. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has invented the ultimate extreme weather hack for creating your own snowstorm, which also doubles up as an ingenious machine to torture Stephen with. It definitely gets my vote. Our snow has melted, our floods have subsided, and the sun is out. We've given you as many weather hacks as there are types of weather. And so until next time, remember, if you do go out, don't forget your surfboard.